seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here I come. Welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church. I'm Steve Blackshire, your pastor here, and I just want to say it's great to be gathered with you for worship here in this online experience today. And as we begin together, I just want to remind you to be sure and check out our website, wesleyumcjc.org. Find out what's going on here with Wesley and how you might be a part of it. And also, take some time right now or sometime during our worship to post uh, below the video feed and let us know you're here. Maybe share with us who else is joining you for worship there. Perhaps you, need, you can share a prayer concern we can be praying with you with. Just post that there so that we can be better connected. And also, I want you to be thinking of this. I'm kind of in the middle of a hide-and-seek game. You know, that game we love to play as kids. When you played hide-and-seek, what was your favorite place to hide, or where was that favorite place to hide? Think about that. Hang on to that favorite place to hide, and we'll come back to it later on. But right now, it's time to get to worship. So let's go.
O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. And with that, let me say welcome to our Wesley UMC sermon series called Fully Known. Uh, we're spending a few weeks together on a journey to find out what it means to be fully known, not just by anybody, but be, to be fully known by God. Now, the roadmap for our journey is Psalm 139. It's an Old Testament scripture passage attributed to ancient Israel's King David. Now, you may remember the David we're talking about, David of David and Goliath and David of Deba and Bathsheba and everything in between in his life. And in the conversation we're going to look to have on this journey with God's living word and with each other, um, that conversation is going to be guided by three questions. What does this passage say about God is the first question. Second, what does this passage say about people, about us? And third, what does this passage say about the relationship between God and people, about the relationship between God and us? And by the way, I just want to remind you that these are good questions to ask anytime you may be looking at or reading in the Bible. Now, we began this journey last week with Psalm 139, 1 through 6, what I just read you a little while ago as we started. It reminds us of the reality that God knows us fully and completely. Knows all our thoughts, our words, our actions. God knows it all and also loves us fully and completely. And there is nothing, nothing that you can do or I can do that will change that. And I got to tell you, I can't think of a better way to start our journey together. So I'm curious, when you used to play hide and seek, what was your favorite place to hide? I remember one time when I was growing up, I might have been eight or nine, maybe 10 years old. Um, there was some kind of family gathering that we were having at our house. It was in the summertime, uh, the weather was nice, and I guess my mom and maybe my aunts and uncles got tired of all of us cousins being around inside the house. And so they sent us out to get out of the house and we decided we were going to play hide and seek. I loved playing hide and seek. And so I don't remember who was it first, but um, they, you know, closed their eyes and counted off however many they were going to count off and off the rest of us went to hide. And I was a bit frazzled. I wasn't sure what to do. One of my brothers hid in the first place I thought to hide. And at the getting close to the end of the countdown, I remember just looking at a tree that I loved to climb up and going, well, I've only got a few seconds. So I just climbed up the tree and got up as high as I could and tried to be as quiet as I could. And whichever one of my cousins or my brothers was it, they looked and looked and looked and looked. They found everybody else but they couldn't find me. Sometimes they were right below me in the tree, but didn't think to look up. And that person got frustrated, actually a little mad, and they asked the other people that were there, my other cousins, to help them find me. And they looked and looked and looked and looked, and they never could find me. And finally, they looked so long, and I gotta tell you, I was just having a good time up in the tree. It was a beautiful day, the wind was blowing, nobody could find me. They finally just all went in the house and the windows were open and I could hear them telling people, we don't know where he is. <laughs> and when I thought the coast was clear, I climbed down and walked into the house. I got to tell you, that is one of the absolute best places I ever hid, playing hide and seek. So what's yours? 
What's your favorite place or was your favorite place when you played hide and seek to hide? How about now? You know, we still like to play hide and seek, don't we? It's just that the people and the things we hide from or that we seek are different now when we're older. And I think that's especially true when it comes to our relationship with God. Our scripture reading today is Psalm 139, 7 through 12. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence, God? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I make, take the wings of the morning and settle on the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not too dark to you, God. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God indeed. The light of God's presence is inescapable. Among other things, what this passage says about God is that the light of God's presence is inescapable. And it's always there, no matter where we go or where we are. Where can I go from your spirit, God? The psalm writer asked. Where can I go to flee your presence? Nowhere comes the resounding answer. The light of God's presence, well, it may seem hidden at times, but it is inescapable. And it's been that way for a long time. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while the Spirit from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was there in the beginning. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. And the word became flesh and lived among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them. They will be his peoples and God himself will be with them. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine for, it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. And there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. From beginning to end of Scripture's sweeping story of God and God's people, the presence of God's light is inescapable. And we tend to play hide and seek with this reality. What this passage says about people, what it says about us, is that we tend to play hide and seek with the inescapable light of God's presence. Sometimes we seek the light of God's presence. Sometimes we seek it desperately, especially when we're experiencing life-changing occurrences like a loss or a serious illness, pain or hurt or uncertainty about the future. In these and other life-darkened times, we long for and seek the presence 
of God's light. But at other times, we seek to hide from the light of God's presence. And when we do, maybe it's something a little like this. General, there's been a breach. We need your password so we can lock down the system. My password? Yes, sir, we need your password. The password that I use? Yes, sir, your password. There's been another breach. Sir. Right, okay. I, H, A, T, E, M, Y, J, O, B, (laughs) 1. I hate my job, one. Want to get away? Now you can with Southwest Ferris as low as $59 one way. Yes to low Ferris with nothing to hide. That's transparency. It's like that with us, with you and me, isn't it? When something that you thought was hidden comes to light, maybe you've hurt someone else, or maybe that addiction has dragged you down again. You've talked the talk, but not walked the walk or that old familiar sin and the shame it brings has returned. Sometimes you seek the darkness, hoping that no one, no one will see, including God. We all do. We all play hide and seek with God, hoping to not be found out. And when we do, it pulls us into an even darker time and space. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light around me become night. Even then, the darkness is not dark to you, God. The night is as bright as the day, for the darkness is as light with you. Hear the good news. Hear the good news. Where we are, so is the light of God's presence. You know, what this passage says about the relationship between God and people, about the relationship between God and us, is that where we are, where you are, so it is that the light of God's presence is there as well. God's presence is there to light our way. And yes, at times, to shed light on our struggle, our our falls, our shame, pain, our regret. But the inescapable light of God's presence is also there to surround you with God's mercy, God's grace, God's wisdom, leading, and God's power. Wherever you've been, wherever you are, wherever you go or find yourself in the future, to the end and beyond, the light of God's presence is inescapable. So I want you to, I want you to open your eyes. Open the eyes of your heart and your soul to see God's light. Wherever you are, open your eyes to see the inescapable light of God's presence. Maybe you use our focus verses For this purpose, we ask, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. Maybe you use that. But I want you to open the eyes of your heart and soul to see God's inescapable light wherever you are. Because when we do, we will begin to see each day, not so much as just something to get through, but see it as somewhere that God is in. And when we do, the community and neighborhood around us will be less a place to, well, just kind of be or make a living or hopefully get what we want, but it will become a place where God already is shining God's light. And when we do, the challenges that face us They face us and seem impossible at times for us to get over, around, or through. When we do, we'll see those times as times when God's inescapable light goes before us and is with us and is behind us. When we do, when we do, we will know that we are not alone, that God and God's light is with us. Let's pray. Oh, 
holy God, God of power and might, God of darkness penetrating lightness, a light that comes to us so much through your Son, Jesus Christ, and in your presence with us every day through your Holy Spirit. God, we worship you and we praise you for all that you are. And God, we know that in your presence, that light of your presence shines deep inside of us, deep into places where we've pushed and hidden things that we'd rather you not see. And for all of those things, we confess and we ask for your mercy and forgiveness when we have done things that have harmed you and harmed others. When we have not loved you and loved others well, God, we thank you for the gift of your mercy and we thank you for all that you give us, including your grace. And in that grace and in your mercy and in these moments, we simply, simply lift up to you those who we know that also need your light, your inescapable light in their lives and presence. We pray for those who need your healing light. We pray for those who need your guiding light. We pray for those who need your light of strength and power. We pray for those who need your light of peace. God, we pray for others and for ourselves. As together now we pray the prayer that your son, our light, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Hey, it's Pastor Steve here again. I just want to say thank you so much for gathering with us for worship this, uh, this week here in our online format. It's great to be gathered with you. It's been great to, to be gathered and worship with you. And by the way, um, if you haven't had a chance yet, to, if you're here in the community, to stop by and pick up one of, your, one of our fully known series cards. Feel free to do that uh, anytime during the day when the office is open, you can come right in, right here at the front entrance to the welcome station, pick one up. Um, on the front just reminds you about our series and then on the back is our focus verses uh, that we're learning together and really using to let this message of God knowing and loving us fully uh, sink deep into us. And so I encourage you to do that. But as you go out this week, of this time and space of worship where we have gathered. As you go out to mm, less hide and more seek and open your eyes to the inescapable light of God's presence. Go in the love and grace of God's presence. Go in the hope and peace of the presence of the risen Jesus Christ. And go in the power and the light of the Holy Spirit. It's with you now and forever. Amen.